with the Chiefs falling to a 3-4 and four record after a bad loss against the Titans this Sunday, is the Chiefs' season already lost? That's the question we're looking at today in this episode of the Red and Gold Report. It's the question that a lot of Chiefs fans are already asking a little early in the season. Is this season lost? The Chiefs went down 27-3 to on Sunday to the Titans. The loss was as ugly as the thought of an Andy Reid swimsuit photo shoot. The Chiefs got waxed worse than Mr. Miyagi's car. 27 of the game's 30 points were scored in the first half. So the game, it was all about the first half. And wow, at halftime, the score was 27 to zero. And the total yards were 277 to 67 in Tennessee's favor. The Chiefs have trailed at halftime in five of seven of their games. It was the first game without a Chiefs touchdown of Patrick Mahomes' career, and it's only the second time in the Andy Reid era in the last nine years where the team has a losing record at this point in the season. So, you know, yeah, this was a rough game for our beloved Chiefies. So is this a lost season for the Chiefs? Well, no, and maybe. In one way, the season is far from over. With this season extended for the very first time to 17 games in all of NFL history and having 14 teams making the playoffs this year, it's likely the Chiefs may need a record of, of about 10 and 7 to make sure they make the playoffs. So could the Chiefs go on a winning streak and finish the season winning seven of these next 10 games? Well, yeah, of course, right? Like, we've got Patrick Mahomes. We can win seven of these next 10 games. It's possible. So, no, even with this ugly, ugly, ugly loss in Tennessee on Sunday, the season is not lost. However, however, <laughs> without the team making major changes, the Chiefs have the same chances of making the playoffs as I have of winning GQ's Best Dressed Man of the Year. Like, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen without some big changes. So if the team does not make big changes, well, yeah, the season's lost. So what changes does the team need to make? Well, before we answer that question, real quick, if you want weekly Chiefs news and analysis and updates brought to you every week, well, then take a second right now to like or subscribe or do all those good things to this channel. What changes does the team need to make so that this season is not a lost season? Well, they were all on full display in this blowout loss to Tennessee, and it was a blowout loss. Now, let's start with the defensive line. When you were a kid, I bet you played some backyard football. And remember how... You know, during backyard football, you could count to one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, all the way up to 10 Mississippi before you could blitz the quarterback, before you could hit the quarterback. Yeah, imagine getting to count all the way to 100 Mississippi before you get to hit the QB. Now, that's the luxury that opposing quarterbacks are playing with versus the Chiefs. Titans quarterback Ryan Tannehill came into the game as the number one most sacked quarterback in the entire NFL. Yeah, it should have been a bounce back game for the Chiefs pass rush. It should have been easy. But instead, the Chiefs had zero sacks by the defensive line for a third week in a row. The only sack of the game came from a blitzing linebacker. $28 million defensive end Frank Clark has more illegal gun charges than sacks this season to the tune of two to zero. He also had more offsides penalties than sacks this game. Changes have to be made. Problem is that the Chiefs only have about $1.7 million of cap space right now. So to be able to make any changes, they're going to have to either cut Frank Clark or Anthony Hitchens, two players that are rated at the very worst in the NFL at their positions, and two players that are very highly paid. They could then make a trade for Melvin Ingram from the Steelers or Akeem Hicks from the Bears to shore up the defensive line. But actually, more realistically, I'd like to propose a different trade. The defensive end Emmanuel Ogba from Miami. He's on the trade block right now because, you know, 
Miami's not going anywhere this season, and it's the final year of his deal. He is an 84 grade from PFF this season, and he is already familiar with the Chiefs system, having played for the team in 2019. But with the trade deadline being November 2nd, time's running out. <laughs> time's running out for these moves, and changes have to be made this week. The other thing that has to be changed is the rushing attack. Mahomes actually led the entire team in rushing yet again on Sunday. Changes have to be made. You know, obviously it hurts the entire offense to not be able to rush the ball. It makes everything in the passing game infinitely harder. It changes defensive schemes. It just makes life harder on the Chiefs if you can't run the ball. You know, Chiefs running backs, they only total 20 yards on the ground. And Something's really wrong when your running backs have nearly two and a half times the yards in the air as they have on the ground. Like You might be thinking that this has nothing to do with the Chiefs' bad defense, but actually it does. The time of possession was 36 minutes by the Titans, 23 minutes by the Chiefs. And so the running game not working for the Chiefs really puts that time of possession in the opposing team's favor, which means your defense is basically out on the field the whole game and they're getting run down. There was one point in the game where the Titans had tripled our time of possession. I mean, if the Chiefs are going to fix this defense, well, then the offense has to do them a favor and start running the ball so they don't just keep them out on the field for that much of the game. Now, the Chiefs need to both make a philosophical decision to actually run the ball and a personnel decision to bring in another running back like Marlon Mack from the Colts. So to answer the question, no, the season is not lost after we lost to the Titans. The Chiefs absolutely could win seven of the next 10 games and make the playoffs. So Chiefs fans out there, I see you online. Guess what? The season's not lost yet, okay? But if the team chooses not to make changes in the defensive line and the running game, well, yeah, maybe the season has been lost already. With those things in mind, why else did the Chiefs get beat as bad as a bass drum on Sunday? Well, a few reasons. To start, the offense line struggled all day. They really, really had an off game. Trey Smith has been playing very well at right guard, but he had an off game. Orlando Brown continues to be unexpectedly underwhelming at left tackle, allowing some very quick pressures. Mike Rimmers was also not good in pass protection at right tackle. Together, the line surrendered four sacks and 31 pressures. That is not good. Another issue is that Mahomes is just taking too much pressure on himself, and that is continuing to create turnovers. After the game, he said that he has been pressing, and yeah, I, I, I think we all agree. He had a fumble on a long scramble and an interception on a deflection on a, a pass that he forced that he shouldn't have. It, it's just, it's a great player forcing things from desperation since he knows he's going to have to score like 73 points every single week to win games. But it wasn't just that. It, it wasn't a good game for him. Even the best players have off games. And actually, only a quarter of his passes were thrown past the first down marker, and his 62 passer rating was the worst he's had since 2019. Along with that, the Kelsey Mahomes connection was, yeah, just off. I, I know the refs did miss a bunch of holding and pass interference calls committed against Kelsey, but, you know, the two only hit on seven out of 12 targets. That's a little off. Another issue, and I know this is an unpopular opinion in Chiefs Kingdom, is that star safety Tyron Matthew isn't playing well this season. He, he looks uninvolved. He's missing tackles. And, and just watch him. Just watch him. I've been withholding this opinion because I like him so much and I keep hoping he's going to have that good week where he looks like himself. But that hard nose, jump in every play, fired up mentality, it's gone. It's gone this season. And I wouldn't be shocked if he is not re-signed after this season. Okay, okay. I know that that's a lot of negatives, but hey, we are Chiefs fans here. So what are a few of the positives that we can actually take away from a rough game? Well, Nick Bolton was on fire. He was one of the few bright spots for the Chiefs defense. He was absolutely all over the field, in the backfield, making all sorts of tackles in the run game. If you want to know why King Derrick Henry did not have his usual like 200 yards of rushing, yeah, that was all Nick Bolton. He led the team with 15 tackles. Yeah, 15 tackles. He had 
four tackles for loss. He was really, really good. He was really good. Corner Rashad Fitton also had a decent day in coverage, and wide receiver Byron Pringle had some good catches. He actually led the team with 73 yards of receiving, even though he really wasn't out there the whole game. So with all of that out of the way, let's turn to some Chiefs news. The big news of the week, of course, is going to be the injury to Patrick Mahomes in the third quarter. Like the infamous hit from the Browns in the playoffs last year, Mahomes, after he got hit in the head, he looked woozy. He found it difficult to stand, to get back to the sidelines. He needed help. However, after a few minutes, Mahomes cleared concussion protocol and was standing on the sidelines looking pretty good late in the game. He didn't come back in the game because, you know, the team was getting blown out, so why take the risk? And Andy Reid confirmed that this is why he didn't put him back in in the postgame press conference. But it should be fair to assume he's going to be 100% for next week. In other news, last week, the Chiefs, desperate for pass rush, were linked to free agent Whitney Merciless, formerly of the Texans. He ultimately actually signed with Green Bay, which is just fine with me, since although he did have a few really great seasons, Back in the day, he hasn't played well for four or five seasons, so not bad news there. In other news, defensive lineman Chris Jones was back in the lineup after missing the previous game with an injury. Great to see him back, but yeah, he, he kind of still looked like he was hampered by injury, and then he did get nicked up again in the game. In other injury news, starting coroner Charvarius Ward returned from injury this week, but unfortunately, he played quite poorly, and I'm hoping Rashad Fitton gets put in the starting lineup. In depth chart news, heading into the Titans game, Thornhill, Juan Thornhill was finally inserted as the starter over Daniel Sorensen. Did Thornhill play well against the Titans? Absolutely not. He actually played pretty poorly. But was he better than Daniel Sorensen? Well, yeah, Daniel Sorensen had been allowing a perfect passer rating against him. And interestingly, Mike Remmers has now taken over the right tackle spot from Lucas Niang. That's a big move. It did not pay off this last week against the Titans. And TMZ-style news, Frank Clark has now officially been hit with his second illegal gun charge. Why he's on the roster still, I have no idea. In other news, you may be hearing about the green dot problem for the Chiefs players with a green dot on their helmets. Well, a green dot on the helmet means that you're equipped to receive the play calls from the coaches on the sidelines. On offense, of course, this is the quarterback calling the plays, but on defense, a lot of times, this is the linebackers. Now, three players on a defense defense can have a green dot on their helmets, but only one green dot helmet can be out there on the field at a time. Usually Anthony Hitchens wears the green dot, but with him out of the game with an injury, Bolton, Neiman, and Gay each had green dots on their helmets. They actually wore two helmets during the game, each of them, one helmet with the green dot and the ability to communicate with the sideline, one without, and then they were switching those helmets in the game as necessary. So if you're hearing about the green dot helmet issue, there it is explained for you. And then just as my personal public service announcement for Chiefs Kingdom, Chiefs fans, please stop fighting each other. Over the last weeks online, there are all these Chiefs fans suddenly fighting other Chiefs fans. Like we got grandpas getting knocked out and curb stomped in the stadium. We've got a super fan, Red Extreme, going down by the knockout. Guys, this has to stop. What happened to the good old days where if we got angry and we needed to fight, we just found a Raiders fan. Seriously, Chiefs fans, we're better than this. Stop fighting each other. With all of that news done, it brings us to next week when the Chiefs are going to play the Giants on Monday night. The Giants are a really bad team, and actually they're kind of a bit of a mess organizationally. The game is also at Arrowhead. It's a home game. So this isn't just a must-win game for the Chiefs. It's a should-win game for the Chiefs. It's a gotta-win game for the Chiefs. I've got the Chiefs by 14 at Arrowhead on a Monday night. I mean, come on. Against a bad team, let's go Chiefs, right? And I hope I am right. That's it for this week. Thanks for watching the Red and Gold Report. Make sure to hit that like or subscribe or follow. Just hit all the buttons, all, all the buttons. And thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. And go Chiefs.